जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू डेफ टॉक्स दिस इज द जनरल स्टॉक फीचरिंग लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल रवि शंकर एंड लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल सतीश दुआ लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल रवि शंकर पी वी एस एम ए वी एस एम बी एस एम अ रिटायर्ड डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ द आर्टलरी ही हैज डीप नॉलेज एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ स्ट्रेटेजिक अफेयर्स नाउ अ प्रोफेसर इन द एरोस्पेस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द आई आई टी मद्रास अ स्पीकर एंड एन ऑथर लेफ्टिनेंट जनरल सतीश दुआ पी वी एस एम यू वाई एस एम एस एम बी एस एम has served as the chief of integrated defense staff to the chairman of the chiefs of staff committee a former co commander 15 co day a speaker and an author of a book india's brave hearts jan shankar jan dua sir welcome to the general stock once again to analyze our favorite friend pakistan lot is happening in that country lot needs to be looked at lot needs to be interpreted and the country is pretty much in turmoil and that's something we've been seeing for the past couple of years now so it's not something new but having said that the recent developments show a huge a very new picture of what's happening inside pakistan and its future so before we begin i'd like to say you know the general stock last time that we had done on the national security policy hit some heads in pakistan and actually got reported almost three to four times and they you know i've had messages emails coming from a lot many of my friends in pakistan talking about mera account band ho jayega and so on so forth uh, it is been that's a that's a backhanded compliment that you <laughs> yeah so i guess it's reaching reaching a certain audience that we we we'd like it to reach so let's hope so this one also reaches the same places yeah it will don't worry so thank you sir for joining me for this discussion and thank let's you. what we come up in terms of the future of pakistan by looking at its current scenario jaldu sir i'd like to start with you sir the economy obviously is in a tumble uh, the imf it's the 22nd time i think they're going to the imf their dollar figure is falling down whole lot of stuff is happening how do you analyze the economy as far as uh, their national security policy is something that we discussed last night so how do you put this entire thing into a perspective well their economy certainly is is uh, at a very weak spot at the moment we all know that the inflation has touched 10% uh, inflation is 10% there the uh, the prices of very essential commodities which hit the common man are very precariously balanced as i if i remember correctly cooking oil has increased by 133 uh, the cost of cooking oil has increased by 130% the cost of fuel uh, by 45% it is touching uh, 145 rupees to a liter which is little short of a dollar so uh, all in all their economy is in such dire state but the the flip side is well pa- pakistan is in trouble uh, economically pakistan is poor shall we say but uh, the pakistanis are not I mean, not all pakistanis are mm-hmm. there is the elite, there are the fauji generals so this brings about more inequalities and also the fact that they are not only they are having to ba- borrow money to service their debts but also uh, the fact is let me just put out a couple of figures uh, when saudi arabia gave them a loan of 3 billion and china also 3 billion they, abu dhabi i think one or two billion uh, i beg you not abu dhabi uh, uae so they laid very stringent conditions that we know but so did imf when imf i think couple of years ago gave them a 6 billion dollar loan uh, after giving them one third of the payment then they laid on very stiff conditions to disburse the rest so it is stopped there I, I, what, what i'm trying to say is that we all tend to analyze the news and uh, uh, or read the news as it is and then we don't follow through so they are actually in uh, pakistan's economy is really in dire straits and uh, uh, the, the present uh, 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 the government uh, imran khan's government actually came uh, won the elections on plank of reviving the economy and uh, creating a islamist uh, uh, um, uh, an is uh, is uh, a welfare state if i if i remember correctly something like that so um, i think uh, what janesh shankar would you like to add something more yeah yeah i think uh, they are in a very very bad state what imran khan was talking of was riyasat riyasat madina and mm. to be a islamic welfare state in the world yes yeah but it's not only this there you know 
Pakistan was always a net exporter of food. Today, it's importing food. That shows where it is. It's going to be hit by water. Water scarcity is on the cards. It's already a water scarce nation. It is expected that in the next couple of years, it will become an absolute water scarce nation. So that's going to be. I mean, look. Let, let's put it. We can keep going on their economy, but the 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 bottom line is. the economy is in such a state that it cannot revive they are in a dead trap then a pro- nice and proper dead trap not with selling whatever they do for the next 5 to 10 years i don't think their economy can revive that and so it with the kind of population they have and the economy going down and the kind of religiosity which has come into their public discourse you know we are going to see a unstable pakistan for a long time to come true yeah that's the that's the crux actually which we have to get to where does you know the pakistan of the earlier time which was in a great geostrategic location dictating a lot of things vis-a-vis today which is now talking of geoeconomics without economics uh, where does it go and what do we do with it confidence still seems high sir whatever sir and oh, that's okay uh, the confidence uh, adi is high because uh, like i think we were discussing in the one of our previous discussions on this plat- very platform itself when i said that uh, they have couple of things going for them one is that geostrategic uh, location the nuclear second is the nuclear card and third is a very professional army that they have so yeah. but then these things they you can bank on the bankability of these factors can only take you uh, this far that you know, far yeah unless you have an economy nothing will go absolutely so at the end mula is required whether you have to buy weapons whether it's china or us we'll discuss that when we come to the diplomatic side but, but when you have to buy you eventually you need money they seem to be not able to keep their nose above water as far as debt servicing is concerned all these figures that i mentioned is all for debt servicing itself yeah that's true sir and as a matter of fact uh, what also actually hits to my mind is the political instability which actually keeps on you know thriving in that country we recently had imran khan coming on open air television and giving out a threat a lot of them a lot of them analyzed it as a threat to the opposition a lot of us look at it as a threat to the establishment uh janashankar sir what would you kind of put this entire situation as uh, as far as this whole call was concerned see uh, let's put it in a, a different perspective pakistan's political instability is well known it's historic right from it, the time it, of independence right from the time their first prime minister got assassinated so they've gone in and out of martial law and all that and we know it that history is known even now we all know that imran khan was a selected prime minister pta was brought into the game and we all know that behind the scenes that the army is controls the whole thing political you know instability in pakistan is endemic it will not run away but what is new and what is of concern or rather what is of note i won't say concern note is that their politics seems to have entered the military establishment you know that is the new thing uh we all know that general bajwa has to retire at the end of the year you have a lame duck government virtually okay and this lame duck government has to appoint the next chief and uh what's more uh this lame duck government or rather imran khan he favors the previous dg isi faiz who's now co commander at peshawar right and who was projected to be the king maker in you know afghanistan and who was also projected or rather reported to have been marched up to the adjutant general adjutant general yes uh, yeah and i mean it's a very funny thing who gets marched up to principal staff officer it's a very realistic uh, and he is supposed to be in the run so there is a the next chief will have a political overtone whoever is appointed uh, so that's a new thing i mean satish yeah your view yeah. i 
Yeah. No, I you see you laid out the facts very correctly, and I totally uh, agree with all that. To my mind, if you uh, sort of step above, rise above, and see the macro picture, it is like this: it the establishment, I mean, the army as we call it, uh, uh, is preeminently in power. For fifty percent of their uh, history, uh, uh, the military has been in power. In the rest of the time, it has been preeminent in power. That means it, it has been calling all the shots anyway. So here is a situation where the while on one hand we said the political establishment, the government will appoint the lamed up government or not, but it will appoint the chief. However, when you have a situation where there is a the power uh, or the organ and power, in this case the army, is not accountable. Because who is accountable is the political leadership. So there is a mismatch. See, if there is an out-and-out totalitarian regime, or let us say they are in power, or if in, in Myanmar. In Myanmar, military is in power. There is, there is no sham about it. Mm-hmm. You may not support it, but the, uh, that's the way it is. So what I'm trying to say is that this is creating more of uh, instability. Yeah, I agree. It's a total hybrid government. And not only hybrid, the next chief itself is going to be political. Who, Which party is going to back the next chief? So if this politics enters the military establishment, establishment as they call it, they don't call it the military, they call it the establishment because that's the establishment of the Pakistan. So there is going to be more instability only. Already I am very sure, you know, by how things have gone. Uh, there will be some amount of politics would have entered the senior ranks of the army. If you remember some time back, there were some dissensions within the senior hierarchy of the army also. Yes. A couple of generals are supposed to be sidelined and, you know, they are not even... Uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's bound to happen. Uh, here is a chief who has a three years tenure and then he takes another three years extension. So when you take a three years extension, those who are aspiring for that uh, job of the they chief, are all gone out. Are, they've all been written off. So now if there is a, another attempt at doing that, so this is... Uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, this that's is also there. This content there, is going to grow. Yeah, that's also there. That's that, that this man is probably looking at a third term. Even that I've read. And, and I've read it by, in um, respectable... Uh, you know, opinion makers in dawn and things like that. So, well, the, the its veracity is not required. The, it uh, the even if the rumors are enough to brew discontent. Good, good enough. Yeah. Right. Right. So there is a instability. The ground on which we used to uh, judge Pakistan. Okay, strong military, weak politics, right? Equation very clear. Pre- preeminence of the military, as uh, General Dua said. All that is a little nebulous at this point of time. And this nebulousness will spill over in the way Pakistan behaves in the forthcoming one year at least. That's true, sir. But uh, before we get on to the geopolitics of the nation, I'd like you both to just give me a short comment on what you feel is the morale impact on the kind of attacks that the Pakistani army is going through. Uh, we read about kidnappings. We read about you know, 17, 18 soldiers being killed. It, 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 it has to carry an impact on towards the morale. There's no doubt about it. Every day, other day, they uh, kill 10 people. Right? And, you know, what is, what is uh, coming out is that the Baluch rebels and the TTP, they're very focused on how to go about their job. And they've learned. I, I have a I have a slightly different take on this. While you are right to say this is bound to have effect on morale, but there are two factors which will paper over it also. Hmm. The one factor is that all said and done, it's a very professional army. Let's give give him. Yeah, yeah. Secondly, the army having a preeminent position also translates into the leadership of the army at every level. The officers have uh, much more. To, let me put it this way: they have much more perks and privileges than we have in any other country, including India. So what happens is that at the end of it, 
those things are enough to paper over such issues because professionalism on one side and they are uh, they are being smug in their uh, perks and privileges does actually take care of uh, you know the uh, the these incidents that you mentioned don't destroy the fabric of yeah yeah That's i agree of- because the average pakistani officer has lot of stake in the system the system going through yes. that will free the morale factor and everything through See, it's not only the officers; even the men, they benefit hell of a lot by being in the army, vis-a-vis the chap who doesn't there. So, to that extent, yes. But then it's a it's a bleed, a regular bleed, which is happening. True, sir. It creates that belt of instability along the western border, and it makes forces Pakistan to commit more troops that side. I mean, they don't have a choice on that. Troops, resources, so on, so forth. After that. yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. uh jaldo as we will we'll start with the geopolitics it's uh, you know with pakistan there are uh, funnily speaking a fail, failing sort of a state has got big players attached to it you got uh, you know it's stuck between usa and china its direct relationships with the usa it's a uh, uh, regional sort of a affair that they're trying to do and of course india so may i request the next discussion that we have uh, between both of you sir on the geopolitics and where pakistan finds itself between these big powers sandwiched and we can see that with certain incidents that have hap- happened recently sir so let's uh, l- let's take these four major countries that i think we we need to discuss uh, pakistan with uh, i mean their relation with these four countries <clears throat> let's talk about the us china afghanistan and india let me start in the reverse order with india the relationship is absolutely cold or it gets heated up at times with the uh, us they are in a bit of unease right now they are in unease because uh, they were all very good when the us needed them actively for logistic support to the troops in afghanistan today for various reasons we know like uh, the often quoted thing in media and analysis is that the, uh, uh, the the president has not found found time to give him a call and things like that give a call to the prime minister of pakistan and things like that so we know that their utility is not redundant but it has been marginalized and but pakistan does want uh, support from uh us both in financial terms because their support is important for them to be able to uh secure loans etc uh, from the imf then uh, also the military equipment hardware because you know the much uh, sort of publicized in the media equip- weapon and equipment that were left there in the in in afghanistan and we heard about it and had more fears than we heard about it or saw that they would some of them will find their way into pakistan and be used against kashmir so uh, all that may be fine but let's also remember that such weapons and platform some of them you inherit like this are not going to be able to function in the long run they require spare support they require maintenance etc then so equipment is one thing now c- coming to towards china china is their all weather friend all right but of late i think we are seeing uh, a different uh, step in relationships because they are unable to service the debt that they have incurred because of the cpec and other equipments uh, weapon and equipment that they purchased from china they both support each other fine but some of it is coming under economic strain as general shankar said economy is going to uh, you know affect every aspect of a country all different angles and as far as uh, afghanistan is concerned i think their relationship is blow hot blow cold perhaps anise again over here as well because while we all thought that they can influence the taliban rulers of afghanistan but we are seeing the same government they having so much anise on durand line on the pashtun issue on both sides that uh, the uh, the durand line itself is very funny because uh, or is, is is very intriguing because one country does not recognize it that is afghanistan pakistan chooses to ignore it when it is convenient 
and uh, let me just explain <laughs> that and then and then i will uh, i'll explain i'll explain my sentence and then i'll hand it over to janish shankar see pakistan uses the jihadi uh, movements or jihadi groups to clamp down on their nationalistic nationalist uh, movements like baluch and uh, pashtun pashtun baluch and pashtun yes so it also uses the jihadi groups to spread radicalization to use the tool of radicalization where in kashmir and in afghanistan to use that in afghanistan they actually uh, use that and the jihadi groups actually find safe havens in afghanistan how do they do it they do it across the duran line so it chooses to ignore the or leave the duran line porous when it while on the other hand they put up a fence when they put up a fence the uh, the mod of uh, the ministry of defense spokesperson said earlier this month only in the beginning of the year he said this is uh, this is illegal and it's not allowed so you see he they made open statements so they are uh, from what we expected that they are influencing uh, they have influence over the leaders there i think they are running into a bit of trouble they they needed afghanistan uh, the taliban in the rulers of afghanistan to broker a peace between with the with their own uh, uh, taliban in pakistan which is also later fallen apart so all in all they are not in a very comfortable position diplomatically also jan shankar yeah you know i'll start with china we'll regress back from china this all weather friendship is under cloud what uh, general dua said is absolutely valid but let's look at it a little deeper imran khan openly favors china and doesn't like usa so we you have to see this entire relationship on a us china thing and he is taking pakistan towards china till last year it, as long as usa was in this area the generals were also happy to go, you know hedge china against pakistan and they were swinging towards china very happy till the cpc was going fine it was very happy so and they were said no we have got china to help with the usa suddenly they have realized that the aircraft which they got from china are not so great some of the submarines and all not so great some reports are coming out that you know bangladesh has packed up its submarines so is myanmar so that equipment is not this thing and that equipment is not coming free it's all at a cost their maintenance issues are there and they also find that the chinese economy itself is cooling down they have china itself is going through a few wobbles so these generals are very smart huh? they are looking at which side their but- butter is or other the bread is buttered suddenly they find that china is not that great a thing so there is a dichotomy the politically imran khan wants to go there these generals don't want to put their fingers beyond a point in china they don't want to be under the under china's grip so they are want usa unless usa is around they can't because ultimately their problem is with india everything stems from the fact that how do they handle india now let's look at usa with usa again imran khan didn't attend that democracy summit so they become cutty there biden has not spoken to them so what does usa is what is usa's residual interest in this area usa itself has not clarified it now there is a debate in usa whether the us uh, establishment should they speak to the military establishment here or the civil establishment here if it is a military establishment it is back to the old square one then what nothing changes okay so there is a problem even with the us how to deal with these fellows these apps are very clear they want us back this is china is not giving them any money usa was giving them free money and most of their children are studying in china or said in usa koi china mein thode nahi ja ke rukega na i mean it's as simple as that so there is a tussle there internally which way to swing and lot of pakistanis are also us based i'm talking about the civil establishment so yeah. they find it uncomfortable that usa is ignoring them and if this problem is continues between china and uh, 
uh, you know, USA and they don't get a favorable deal and they don't come into preeminence. Right now, they are bo- being ignored by both almost. Where do they go against India? Now, you look at India. India is the fastest growing economy. Everything is going. It's become a world power. When you talk of vaccines, it's a global power. You know, today, the major problem is who's got the best vaccines going around? Who's got this thing? It's India. Okay. And so, they can do very little against India. On the other hand, if since they're not making headway with, you know, Pakistan, uh, sorry, China and USA, they are vulnerable. Day-to-day life is not going, and they cannot, their economy, everything lies in turning towards India, and which they are not. It is, this is what their own commentators say. Okay, yeah. so you, we've looked west, let's, I mean, east, let's look west, what then Dua said. Whatever it is, See, the Taliban want money to survive and they want recognition to move ahead. And they were banking on Pakistan to give them. Pakistan has given them neither. Pakistan could keep us special and you So, okay, it's like really one bikari taking, you know, robbing the other bikari. So, they're in, a, they're in a major problem. And of course, so as a result, you, we spoke of the problems in, along the with Pashtuns and Baluch. That also is not getting resolved through the Taliban. So there are issues. Right? Things are not hunky-dory. Even Pakistan thought we'll get, get hold of the minerals in Afghanistan and all. Now that is all pie in the sky. So I think overall, there is a lot of nebulousness and you know, this is neither Purana Pakistan or Naya Pakistan. Pakistan with this land have economy, political rife, and also geopolitics is absolutely. I mean, uh, you'll agree with me, Satish. Have you seen Pakistan geopolitically so weak? Let me oh. ask this question to you. Like we discussed now in the last 20 30 minutes, is that. <clears throat> Uh, economically, politically, when I say politically, political military equation, because that, yeah. that is the political politics of it. So economically, politically, and diplomatically, we just discussed with the four major countries that they are concerned with. And all these three fronts, Pakistan is in a very weak spot now. So th- that obviously is a cause of concern for them. And I let me just take your uh, Take a cue from your last uh, one of the last sentences. You said this is neither Naya Pakistan nor the Purana Pakistan. But I think this is the Naya Pakistan. This is the oh, okay. no, you should, yeah, yeah, I agree good, with you. you want to, this, I understand what you're saying, but I'm just trying to twist the words. Wait, wait, when I said Naya we, Pakistan, I yeah, said Naya Pakistan I know, in the context we, of what I'm yeah, obviously, what, what I Iran agree Han, with what you're uh, saying that uh, the Pakistan which but you I to think this is, is the so what I would like to huh, I'm, I'm also twisting sentence today. This is the new reality of Pakistan. Yes. And again, I take your cue from your sentence only. Like the commentators in Pakistan, you read the Pakistani media, the press, they've started saying today, like we said, it'll take 5-10 years if they correct their policies. Well, from my uh, my point of view, I in my view, I feel they're uh, one of the biggest uh, steps they could take if they want the economy to grow and economy economy is the main thing that must first stabilize to stabilize other other aspects and that will can actually happen if they have better trade with india they have we have better relations with them that cannot happen india will not talk to them till they give up their terror so it's a, there are wheels within wheels so we have to they have to realize how they want to proceed ahead and to my way, I'm, I'm just saying what General Shankar also said, that yes, their uh, their best option would be to be with India. But <laughs> India but and Pakistan. <laughs> See, so there, lies the, 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 there lies the rub. Yeah. Actually, yeah. this is this idea which I said, no, their best thing lies with India, is not my own idea. Yes. It is from them. One of their best things. Yes. Their yeah. commentators are talking about it. Right? Their commentators are talking about it. Right. But then, uh, let's 
let me turn the whole thing around let me stop dis- discussing pakistan given the fact that this is the new reality of pakistan what do we do i think that the larger question is one thing for sure the new reality of pakistan economically for a long time it's going to be where it is its western border is going to be in trouble it is going to play the shuttle between china and usa neither i don't see their uh, you know improvement beyond a point okay a weakening china today china is itself not so strong as it was say 6 months back right usa is in also in transition they are more focusing somewhere else so where does that leave pakistan we are very clear where does it leave india is the question yeah satish let's discuss that for a few minutes may, may i say free to do anything it wants sir no i don't think so i don't think in, 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 a, in a lighter way sir in a lighter way uh, but also um, not so much in lighter way but i mean one option is if india does nothing yeah if we sit on the sidelines and watch uh unless pakistan takes some very drastic steps to my mind they are uh, they are sort of poised or headed downhill at the moment uh it is like janan shankar said i i think you may be meaning this it is not in our interest that we have a very weak pakistan but that's something that analysts have been saying for decades That's, whether it's a weak pakistan I, or a strong pakistan we have to deal all with all we it. need to do is make that it should not be harming our interests and press and the first the foremost first and the foremost thing that it harms our interest is by exporting terror so my fear also is that unless it can do things you know very positive steps one of which we discussed is have better trade relations and otherwise better relations with india if that's not happening then maybe uh it will start to brew trouble for india because that's that's the other thing that it it can it can try to do how much of it uh, will be successful will remain to be seen but we also need to watch with concern uh, other issues that are happening let's say punjab and i remember many years ago there was another report of like we spoken about death by thousand cuts there is also a, a i don't know what happened about it there after there was one input that was picked up that they wanted to start off a death by thousand revolutions now does that mean so many protests and violent protests that we see in our country we need to sort of start examining things beyond kashmir and even beyond yeah, punjab yeah. i'd say hey, not only that we have to also remember this whole year just imagine we are now going to major elections we going to have elections in punjab we going to have elections in up goa that is one part of the story later this year we going to have elections in gujarat uh despite having one of the strongest governments in the recent past of our country we have not been able to carry out full reforms the way we wanted to ca and uh, farm laws we know where, what happened right uh, i'm not saying what is right or wrong but the fact is that it has, it has affected us and uh, this extended elections throw up issues emotive issues and we are our, our population is susceptible to ethno religious you know fingers in the pie and will go adverse so we got to have a certain amount of instability for which we have to be aware of and how to deal with it why we cannot let our economy of go down the uh, off rail we are the fastest growing economy in the world today we should remain so it is only then that you can paper over all these yeah. i i mean i'll agree with what uh, satish just said it doesn't matter to me whether pakistan is weak or strong it doesn't matter I, whether it is a weak pakistan or a strong pakistan or a disintegrated pakistan all three cases we are going to have problems the point is are we ready to handle those problems and if so how because the most obvious thing is kashmir but we need to start looking beyond kashmir that's my only proposition absolutely i think both of you have brought this out that the uh, mat ball needs to go away from kashmir and into lot many other things that are happening within the country and try and analyze if there is a connect and try and actually cut nip the you know bud at the roots 
yeah and there's another issue which we need to be cognizant of when we handle all this as the relationship between pakistan and us you know goes through its tribulations wherever it is we also have to be cognizant of the fact that we have a strategic equation with uh, usa how does it that get affected yes. how do you leverage that how do you leverage that right and willy nilly you will find in this entire equation with the way things are going in ukraine and the way things are going between U- russia and uh, usa pakistan can be a spoiler what will be our future with russia if whatever our future with russia and usa will dictate also the our future with usa uh, china see unlike pakistan which is a maverick nation china is not a foolish nation okay they also respect strength that's why they when it comes to us they are quite careful in what they do so the way pakistan behaves and its equations and the way we handle pakistan will also have an impact on our economy and our larger geopolitics so we should we should be very careful in how to handle pakistan yeah satish yeah yes yes absolutely i i have already said my piece that i agree with you very interesting point you brought out sir and as a matter of fact pakistan seems to be leveraging the gap between india and china today by taking in the weapons and this and that i'm sure they are putting a little more fuel into the fire by doing whatever and recently also you you talk about the russia pakistan i mean they tried getting a meeting with uh, putin in beijing uh, another story that putin putin has rejected it but uh, the effort is still there look the best option for india is to keep with pakistan where it is <laughs> in some manner or other let it be there and we continue with what we are supposed to do but then that's a difficult thing to happen because we must also give it to them that pakistan is a nation which knows how to survive and survive better than most true sir jan shankar sir th- jan duwa sir thank you so much for taking us through some very important points that have been brought out in this and i i hope uh, we are as a nation looking at this particular thing in a diplomatic handling of pakistan and the concerned uh, uh issues that come out of it china us russia everything is connected to this if the pakistanis to understand and as i was uh, speaking uh, to jan shankar offline some time ago so that you know a lot of pakistanis themselves say that today you're leveraging china's relation bad relationship with india and getting some fighter aircraft and some ships and this and that with yeah. china india trade being where it is today if india and china actually shake hands what will you do then so there there there's a big question which is being asked in pakistan as well theek hai you can you know find your anti india sentiments through china but it's a short lived preposition so there's a lot which i think uh, you both have also brought out in terms of the pakistani situation today on ground and uh, you know the the from the politics in the army to the infighting in terms of uh, the politicians themselves and the instability of the economy and of course the ashrafia as the pakistanis like to call it uh thank you sir for joining me today to take us through the story of pakistan which is always interesting and uh, you know in next couple of months as everybody knows is going to be very eventful we'll come back with a better and a, you know updated analysis as when the situation opens up thank you sir and jai hind thank you thank Thanks. you thank jai you a lot jai hind